Hello, Alyssa DeHart here. I wanted to walk through Ray Notes with a little bit more, I don't know, specificity so that you can see, not that my way is the best way of doing it, but so you can see how I start to really transcribe and assess my own coaching. So I'm going to share my screen with you and I will walk you through some Ray Notes. When you come into Raynodes, there are several different things. I'm already logged in, so this is the main area. Typically in here, if you just start with Raynodes, you're going to see things like a coaching demonstration, how to transcribe the Raynodes, and tutorial for mentor coaches. I moved it into its own folder. I didn't get rid of it, and part of the reason was because I just like it to be clean. I don't know. It just helps my brain if things are easy and clean. The other thing that I want to do right here is show you a couple different things that are on Raynotes. So if you're going to be adding a recording, you click add recording. You can then just drag and drop your file here. Choose the number, <clears throat> excuse me, choose the number of speakers in a coaching demonstration. It's going to be two and then click estimate cost. And what will happen is it will Take your downloaded um, MP3 and you don't need to share an audio because ICF doesn't need the audio, I mean the um, video. So just share the audio file. It's a lot faster to go through. And, um, and so just drop it there, two speakers. Standard model is 10 cents a minute. High accuracy is 10 cents a minute. Fast and low accuracy is two, 10 cents a minute. And then if you want somebody else to do it for you, it's $1.50 a minute. But honestly, I, um, I tip, typically just do standard. I might try the beta though, um, just for the fun of it. And then you estimate the cost and then it'll tell you if you've done a 30 minute video or audio, you're going to get a $3 charge and then you can just make sure you have $3 worth of credits in your account. And then you click transcribe. The other thing is you can come over here, there's a tour. You can look at your profile. So here's my profile. And I have chosen under account type, mentor coaching. This is ideal for transcribing, assessing and sharing coaching sessions. I also, of all the different choices that I have here, choose the ICF PCC Markers 2020. You obviously can choose some other competencies depending on the work that you're doing. There's even an EMCC supervision competency framework, which is really cool. Um, but I choose the ICF PCC Markers. And I do auto capitalization after a period because it doesn't always capture periods. And so then if I go period, it'll automatically make the next word capital. Use lowercase if period is removed, do that for the same reason. And I, I want it to improve my experience as much as possible. So I now that I know that this is what I have, which is really important, I can go back to the library. So here's the library. And then I have my YouTube uh, videos where I am working with people on um, the, the, the coaching. And so I come in here and I haven't done anything at all with this one. I tend to come over here and make myself um, speaker one. But let's be honest, I'm speaker one because here we go. All right, here we go. So, Steve, um, before we get going, is there anything that you need in order to be like fully present and ready for this experience we're about to have together? So I'm going to pause it right there. There are several things that need to be corrected. So, all right, here we go. So Steve, I can then capital, come in here, capitalize. Um, Steve, before we get going, is there anything that you need in order to be like sleep present? I don't think so. I think it was like fully present. Fully present. And it was fully present. I just uh, didn't say it very clearly. So I would, um, 
clean that up. For this experience we're about to have together. Um, I'm no, I'm ready. I was like, just took a breath and I just feel centered, so I'm good to go. So what I know is I'm speaker one. So here we come over here. I can click on this and I can put Lisa. On speaker two, even though. I've shared his name as Steve. He shared his name as Steve. I know he's Steve. You know he's Steve. He knows he's Steve. I still just default to client because it isn't important really what his name is for the purpose of the transcript that you might be creating for your coaching demonstration for the ICF or really for any coaching um, uh, assessment that you might be doing. It's enough that he's the client. And so you can just start there. You can just highlight things and start with. So, so let me go back up here now. So, all right, here we go, Steve. Is there anything that you, before we get going, that you need in order to be fully present? So part of what I'm doing here is I'm starting to build trust. And so that's really support and empathy. Um, I think the other thing that that fits for me, and it could just be me, is it, I'm, I'm being clear about, you know, where, you know, like, what do you need in order to be fully present today? I, I don't know, maybe not ethical, actually. So if you need to, if you put something and you're like, no, it really doesn't fit, you can always delete. And then you come up here and you go, okay, so now it's just trust. So let's just call it trust. Excellent. So what showed up for you that you would like to explore in coaching today? So now I've got my very first question. So if we come over here, we're going to go into agreement setting because we know what showed up for you that you would like to explore in coaching today. We're starting this process of identifying what to accomplish. Um, we're starting this process of defining what to address. I'm not really, I haven't asked what's important yet. I'm just really starting this process of agreement setting. Yeah, what I'd like to work on is that I I work in the, you know, I'm a coach, I work in the personal development space, I work with in, in I put myself in a lot of different groups and I, I give a lot and I love doing that. And the experience I have in that is really rewarding. And I've come to a you know realization recently that I don't have that same experience for me, for my life, uh, like on a daily basis. So I do it, I create it for other people and I experience it in environments, but not for me the same. And I wanted to explore that and I want to actually have a shift in that. Yeah. What would a shift look like if you were to have a shift in that? You know, I think about... Okay, so a couple of things that I want to capture here is he's starting to talk about what's important to him. So there's a sense of, of I want to work... Um, on, on how I am experiencing my own life, right? I don't have the same experience for my life that I give to other people. So I create it for other people and, and I experience it in, in, in certain environments, but it's not, um, but it's not the same for me. And I want to explore and shift that. So what I'm going to do here is capture a quick note and I'm going to put possible topic. I think it might be the topic, but I don't know. And I'm going to need to test that. So a possible topic goes right there. Um, and I can highlight other things and create possible topics. What I also love over here is that you're going to start to see the questions show up and which competency it is and which markers it indicates. And also when I hear a possible topic. And when I look at this one, um, let me start this one again. What shift look like? I, I missed the what. So let's put in the what. What would... What would shift look like if you were to have a shift in that? So what I'm starting to do here is I'm actually starting to figure out, I'm still trying to define what to address and what to accomplish. I'm also 
starting this, that's just a very beginning, like what would shift look like if you were to have a shift like that? It's a measure of success that I'm aiming towards. I think the other thing that's showing up in these questions, and so I want to just highlight these also, is you've got things like trust, because I am partnering with the client to respond, inviting the response for the client. I am also starting to demonstrate um, presence from the markers. I'm demonstrating curiosity. I'm supporting the client to choose what happens. And in this particular question, what would shift look like if you were to have a shift in that? I am responding to who he is as a person and also what he wants to accomplish. Then I'm going into the next one, which is listening, which is I am exploring the client's words. I am summarizing very at a very high level what he has shared and I'm not interrupting. What else shows up here? And let's see here. Just look at awareness, but I think the things that come under awareness are going to be things like uses concise language and asks in a clear, open ended question. Right? So now that I am looking at this one question, you'll start to see it right over here. What would shift look like if you were to have a shift in that? And and what we've got is we've got all of the different competencies over here and which ones they are being demonstrated. So you don't have to open it over here, which you can. You can also see it all the way along the side right here. You know, I think about the, the different groups in the educational space or in the training or, or the, where I lead teams and the, the experience that I have is I, I feel connected, I feel centered, uh, I feel, um, I guess, in the zone, in the like fully alive and that would be the experience that I want to create for me all the time. Okay, I'm going to just stop it right there. So he says something really powerful here, I guess in the zone of fully alive. This is a possible outcome. So I'm going to keep a note here. So this is a possible success measure. possible outcome. And, and it also will possibly give us a place of anchoring the container of a conversation. So I don't know that to be true yet. I have hypotheses now to start to listen for. Um, I know that he would want to experience that for himself. This is also another, and again, note, um, possible outcome, right? So I'm gathering that stuff. Yeah. Not just, yeah. So I said, actually, yeah. So I clean it up as I'm going because it is AI. And, um, and so therefore it's not perfect. You can do a hard return right here on um, this and what you'll get, well, you're supposed to be able to do a hard return. Why is it not letting me do a hard return? Let me just go here. You can do a hard, you can do it back. There we go. So hard return. And when you do a hard return, if it's set on Lissa and I do a hard return, it will turn into the next person client. And I try and group everything that I say and everything that the client says together because it just, for my brain, maybe not for yours, but for my brain, it just makes it easier if everything that the client says is together. What you won't get is different paragraphs. So the hard return won't get you a new paragraph. You can do that, but it starts to become confusing for somebody reading your transcript if it's like client one 18, client, 122, client, 
125, client 130, right? Like it's going to start to be really confusing if we've got these little different timestamps that are all the client versus just the client said this within the 118 time frame, And then I don't say something until 145. I think the other thing that's really kind of cool is up here right now, based on not having cleaned it up, I've spoken 11 minutes and the client has spoken 22, which is kind of nice to know because now I know that the client did speak more than I did. Doesn't mean that I, you know, said everything that I, I may not have, I may have spoken too much, but we'll see as we go through the call. Um, what I do know is at least in a rough guesstimate that I've spoken less than the client. Yeah. Not just, yeah. I love that idea of fully alive. And what, when you hear yourself saying the words fully alive, what do you notice around this full aliveness that you're aiming towards? So I'm going to just go ahead and make these capitals because they're so important to what he just said. And I'm only doing that for myself because it just makes me happy. Um, this question though, as we start to look at this, let's go into presence. So the coach is um, demonstrating curiosity, but I'm also responding to the who of who he is. When I go into trust, um, it's partnering by inviting him to respond. I did this backwards because I want you to see that regardless of what order you pick things in, Ray Notes will automatically put it in the right order. So that's kind of cool to know. I think it sits in with agreement setting because we're starting to really, again, look at a measure of success um, and we're still exploring what's important. Um, and then I think there's probably something around listening where the question is customized. It's using the client's words. It's, and I'm not interrupting and it's summarizing um, what was communicated. And what else does it have? Let's see here. Um, what do I have here? Wonder what I feel like I've missed. Yeah, I'm gonna just go with that's what I'm noticing. Again, I may be noticing these. You may notice something else that's totally cool. Capture what you notice. I may capture things that you don't notice. That's totally fine. I'm not 100% perfect. I'm a human being, so some of my own biases probably come into this. So I just name that. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to capture what I believe that question answers or uh, addresses in the competencies. I notice I smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I feel excited. I, I, I mean, I smile. I, I feel a sense of, I mean, I feel that sense of aliveness. It's like, oh, like that's something that I want um, yeah. and it's something that I love and I can connect with it. And I notice as I'm saying it, I'm pointing <laughs> Out there. Yeah. How do we go from pointing out there to uh, maybe it's pointing in here? I don't know. So there's that was actually a question. Um, this is probably a comma. Pointing out there, comma. To maybe it's pointing in here, I don't know. And again, so as we're looking at this, we are still, we're really actually doing some awareness building right here because I'm asking about the client and asking them to explore beyond the situation. Um, I'm asking a clear open-ended question and that's pretty concise language. And it also makes me realize that what was missing up here was the awareness piece because one of the things that this demonstrates right up here is shares an observation without attachment. So I wanna, and again, it's a pretty clear open-ended question. I'm not sure it's the most concise language, but let's go with, you know, that's enough anyway. But I wanna be able to capture that because um, 
you know, we can always come back in here. And I love that idea fully alive. And you start to see it's in order again, um, presence, trust, agreement, setting, listening, and now awareness, sharing observations without attachment. That is what I'm thinking. That's what that's like. That's the thing that I that I um, that I want to work on and, and want to have, and to create that, cultivate that, so it's internally. So instead of me showing up to these places and experiencing that and bringing that, this is a that's who I am, and I wake up and I experience that, and so it comes with me wherever I am. Yeah. So then in our conversation today, okay, so before we do that, again, here's a, I go, I do a, in my case, I do a delete, I'm on a Mac, but backspace would be the same thing. That way the client is just consolidated right over here. But what I'm, what this question is also doing here around this awareness is it's also getting to what it is that's really important to him. So instead of me showing up to these places, um, I'm bringing this. It's who I am. It's what I wake up and I experience. So it comes with me wherever I am. This is, um, I'm going to put, sounds important. And I'm just capturing these little notes in what the client says, because I'm, it gives me places to come back to or to test hypotheses as they come along and test my assumptions so that I am asking the client versus assuming he said those words and that's absolutely what it means. So here you're going to hear me and I'm going to start again asking the question and get, making sure I have clarity. Just so I can clear, get clarity is really, yeah. So then in conversation today just so I can clear get clarity is really this moving from not changing how you express it out to others but really the shift into expressing it for yourself and having that full so we're moving towards fully alive if I'm hearing you correctly from where you there's a question here it's a I'm speaking a lot but there's a question there you are to fully alive so as you hear this, this, this idea of moving from where you are to fully alive, where would be the first place that would be important for us to explore that might be between where you are and being fully alive? Okay, so I'm going to start here. I need to correct this. My grammar isn't always perfect. So if you're a grammar person and you're watching me, I may make you cry, but, um, but this works for me and what I'm trying to do. So what I'm doing here in this question is, but really shifting into expressing it for yourself and having that um, moving towards fully alive, basically. Um, if I'm hearing that correctly, which is one question. And I ask another question. This is technically um, question stacking, but it works in this particular case because I'm kind of just testing some assumptions from where you are now to fully alive. Again, question. I don't, actually, that's probably more of a period. So if I'm hearing you, it's this movement. Where would be the first place for us to explore? So what I've done here in this particular question is I'm, again, identifying what's important, what they want to accomplish, and confirming the measure of success, this move towards fully alive. Then I've got trust. I'm showing support and empathy. I'm supporting his expression of feelings. I'm partnering with him to respond. I am also would say that there's something around presence here. I'm responding to the whole person. I'm supporting the client to choose what they would like to explore. So choosing what happens, demonstrating curiosity. I'm not sure I've demonstrated space for silence yet, but, but that's a lot already. I think there's this listening that is being demonstrated. The question is customized. It's exploring the client's words. It's inquiring, I don't know that it's inquiring about perception, but I'm not interrupting and I've summarized what is being communicated. 
what just happened. Okay, there it is. So then um, let me see if there's anything else. Because again, remember, we can always delete stuff. So I think I'm, 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 I'm starting this as a help towards moving towards an outcome and to also explore beyond a situation um, and it's about the client. So awareness shows up in a slightly different way in this particular question. I, I, I notice in my body, my mind's going, oh, I have to do something. Like, what do I have to do or think of or figure out between there? So what I just noticed, I, I notice is that there's, it's something about the relationship with me or um, I, or, or what I, I don't think it's what I do for me, but it's how I relate or how I be with me. And my mind straight away went to, oh, I know what to do outside. I know what to do and be for other people, but this being that for me. What does being that for you in in as you consider that being that for you? You have any images that show up or ideas that show up about times maybe where you've been that for you? So here again, what is being that for you? And as you consider that being that for you, do you have any images that show up or ideas that show up about times maybe where you've been that for you? So what I'm moving clearly to here, and again, it's partnering to invite, you know, the, the client to respond for sure. There's presence in the sp space of really the whole, the human, the whole self, the whole person. Um, it's also towards what they want to accomplish. It demonstrates curiosity. There was clearly space for silence in that particular exchange. Listening. I'm still customizing the questions to the client. I'm exploring the, again, this word of fully alive. Um, I'm inquiring about his perception. You know, maybe there's a place of his perception about a time where maybe he has been that for himself. I'm not interrupting. And, um, and then let's see if there's anything else, probably around awareness, there's something also. So uh, we're exploring beyond themselves and a little bit beyond this situation also we want to see maybe there's some other time where they've been able to do this i would say i'm asking about the client um i'm asking fairly clear open-ended questions using mostly concise language in this particular case and you know we know i'm letting the client do most of the talking in this so that particular question nails these four different competencies it's a good question. I, I, mm. I'm not, I'm not, not many, nothing's really coming to me, the things that are, are, are that clearly for me. Um, I mean, I have noticed that like if I've done meditation retreats, uh, you know, for two weeks, then I can notice it there. Um, more so what I was realizing or, or, or what was coming to me is times where I've had something important to me or an intimate relationship you know like have that real connection and then i'll do things but it's it's for me but it's because i want them to experience things like i'll get i'll exercise and be healthy and be fit because i want them to experience the best of me and so interesting yeah. what is it that 
it strikes me, and I could be wrong, so always know that you can correct me if I share something and it doesn't land for you, you won't hurt my feelings. Um, but there's an interesting tension that I'm hearing between, I, I love doing things for other people and I do for myself in connection with the, the value for somebody else. Mm -hmm. What is that, what does that, I almost want to just like, what is the story that's attached to you need to be doing this for somebody else is the curiosity, I guess, that is coming up for me as you're talking. Yeah. The... Okay. So this is sort of a complicated question. So certainly not concise, um, but I'm also in the process of trying to make sure that I'm hearing him correctly. So as we're looking at this, um, listening um i'm summarizing my understanding of what the client has said i'm also customizing my question i think there's also some work around awareness here in the sense of um i'm sharing an observation like the thing that's shown up for me when I share an observation, I always try and follow it with a question. So it's an interesting tension that I'm hearing. And this, I love doing things for other people and I do for myself in connection with the value for someone else. What is that? What does that, I almost wanna like, what is the story attached to? You need to be doing something for somebody else um, is the curiosity. I guess that's what's coming up for me as you're talking. So it's not clear and concise, um, but it is an open-ended question. It does share an observation without an attachment. It really does help towards the client moving towards an outcome in the sense of they're exploring beyond themselves and beyond the situation because they're really having to look at both. I would say there's trust here because you know, I'm saying, please correct me if I'm wrong. So shows support and respects the client's talents and insights, shows report, support and empathy, ex supports expression of feeling and partners by inviting the client to respond. In regard to presence, I'm really looking at the who, I'm demonstrating curiosity. And so I, probably just stick with those ones right now. But the story is like, it's almost like I'm not enough just as me. Like I have to be doing something in order to, in order to exist, it's not, not exist or matter, but I have to be doing something and then I can, I get a feeling of worth from that or I get a feeling of belonging from that or a feeling of purpose from that. Mm -hmm. It is an interesting conundrum between I want to be with myself and yet I need to be doing in order to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So he's really kind of sharing this, what I see is a kind of a competing uh, commitment maybe or competing beliefs. Um, and, and what you hear me doing right here in this one is really just ref playing back um, by summarizing what is communicated um, by, you know, that's an interesting conundrum. I think there's also a piece around awareness where I am sharing an observation, you know, with without being attached to it. it. There really isn't a question there so much, but there is some concise language. And this can be hard return or a hard- Absolutely. And hence why I like, you know, like talking about it, because I can see that it's not working for me. Mm -hmm. Like it is, or it is working, but the more that I grow and the more work that I do, it's coming to where it's not working because I want what I'm bringing for other people. I want that for me. Yeah. And okay. I, and I, oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, like, I do, I do get the experience of it, but I want it all the time. Mm -hmm. No, I, I yeah. really hear that as you say that. Um, I can really feel in, in my own body that sitting with the value that you offer yourself. 
right? What is the, what is, and maybe there isn't, but I'll just throw this out here in the space and you tell me what we do with it. But I'm, I'm almost wondering, is there like some way of perceiving yourself that is, that would allow you to be and give to yourself that isn't happening right now or that could be happening? I, I'm not sure exactly the question. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here real quick. Um, or could be happening, that's a question mark also. Um, so I'm being pretty transparent here, but again, I am working on listening by summarizing what's communicated. I am customizing the question. I'm exploring you know, this idea of being, which I'm not sure whether it's a word or an emotion, but I'm also inquiring about his perceptions. So there's a lot of listening going on there. In regard to presence, I believe this would be towards the whole person um, demonstrating curiosity. I think when it comes to um, trust, you know, there is a supports the expression of feelings and partnering to respond and around awareness. I think there is, I'm asking about him beyond himself. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I did any of those. Um, I, I'm sharing the attachment without any attachment. Um, but I think right now what I'm really doing is, is really starting to look beyond the situation itself. We're not really talking about a specific situation, which is other than he gives to others and he would like to give to himself. But we're exploring in the sense of beyond that, right? So is there something that could be happening if you, know, you were to be giving to yourself? Yeah, I, I can... I get the feel for that. Um, the thing that's coming to me is, is like the inner voice of me saying, "Hey, what is it that you, you, you know, what am I not doing for myself that I want to be doing?" Um, and then I don't have anything specific, but the feeling is, is like I want to be doing like more for me. Right. And I, and I think the question, if I can dial it in just a touch more, has to do with what would allow you to show up for yourself the way you're showing up for other people? Okay. So this is a much better, more useful question in the sense of, you know, I'm dialing <laughs> the question in a little bit more. Uh, here I've said all that, and I might even put a note in here that says, um, uh, wait, wh why am I talking so much? Just as a reminder to maybe get a bit more concise um, in my own languaging here, I'm in a conversation though. We're not always going to be perfect in conversations at any level, ACC, PCC, MCC, human being to human being. We're going to have places where we are not perfect. So this question is much more dialed in though, right? Um, what would allow you to show up for others the way that you are for yourself, the way that you are showing up for other people? This is the real crux of the question. And so when we look at this one, again, we're going to be seeing, let me just stop this one. Um, what we're going to be seeing here is I'm, I'm respecting his, his insights and awarenesses. I am partnering for him to respond. I am demonstrating presence in the sense that I'm responding to the whole person, but also what he wants to accomplish. I'm demonstrating curiosity, allowing space for silence. I am listening because the question is customized to what the client brought forward. It's exploring his words. 
It's inquiring around his perception. I'm not interrupting. It summarizes what's communicated at the same time. And um, asking about the client, exploring beyond themselves, exploring beyond the situation. It is also clear, concise, and allows the client to do most of the talking right there. Mm. This is getting like, well, this is like, like genuine here in the space of it was if I connected with loving myself the way that I love other people and uh, the work that I do, if I connected with that, that would, that would, uh, that would have that be, it would, it would bridge the gap. That would actually be the thing. Yeah. What does it mean to love yourself? Okay. So he's, I mean, this is really important. So when I'm hearing, you know, if I connected with this bridging the gap of loving myself, that would be the thing. I'm going to leave a little note that says super important. Right. And so at this point, I want to explore what these super important words mean. If I loved myself, loving myself, right? Um, actually, I'm going to put that in parentheses because I think it's so crucial. And so what does it mean to love yourself? So come with me along on this. we got trust, right? We're respecting his insights and his awareness supports and empathizes, expression of feelings, partnering. He can go anywhere. I, I don't know what love means to him. He's the only one who can answer that question. And I've got presence. I am responding to the whole person. I'm supporting him to, um, you know, what he wants to accomplish, which is this idea of how does he show love to himself, demonstrating curiosity, allowing space for silence. You guys can probably start to do this with me. Listening. I am customizing the question. I'm exploring his words, his emotions. I'm inquiring about a perception, not interrupting. And I would say that when it comes to awareness, I'm asking him, I'm asking um I would say this is more maybe beyond the situation. It's a clear, open-ended question using concise language, allowing the client to do most of the talking. That's the ones that I would choose for this. My mind wants to give a lot of the logical answers. <laughs> maybe we can maybe we can listen to your mind in a little bit, but I'm really curious yeah. what just happened here. <laughs> yeah. In in my heart, it was like I'm not sure. Like that was the that was the feeling. Like I'm not sure. Like I should know, and it's like I'm not sure. How does not having an understanding of what it means to love yourself impacting your ability to give yourself love? Yeah, it it totally does. Um, Okay, so I'm kind of joining with him here where this is probably, it demonstrates trust, but not from the competency specifically in the, or at least not from the marker specifically, but there's humor there. And it's like, he knows he wants to go into his head and, and he's really good at going into his head. So I really, and he's touching his heart in the video. So, um, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm much more interested in what's happening here where he's been touching. So that's, it's not really a question as much as it is a statement. So I would, if I were to give that anything at all, I would probably um, shares an observation without an attachment because he could say, no, I don't want to look there. Um, but in my heart, I don't know, I should know. So how does not having an understanding of what it means to love yourself impacting your ability to give yourself love? This then, again, let's do it. We got respects his insights, shows support and empathy, expression of feelings, and partnering to respond. We've got presence, responding to the whole person. 
In this case, for this client in this situation, it's responding to what they want to ex um, accomplish. Demonstrates curiosity, allows space for silence. Um, I would say there is uh, listening because I am customizing the question. I'm exploring the client's words, their emotions. Um, I am inquiring around perception. I'm not in, interrupting. And I am in a very, in a very subtle way, summarizing what is communicated by repeating back the question or what the client said, but with, as a question. And then it really invites the client to think, consider themselves, exploring beyond themselves, beyond the situation. Um, it's a clear, open-ended question using concise language that allows the client to do most of the talking. So I would say that that's some of the things that I would give that particular question. Yeah. But it totally does. Um, and this is like, this is where that disconnect is. I can see what it's like to love someone else and to be love for someone else and give love to someone else. And if I do the logic, I can see the same for me, but it doesn't have the same feeling. So that's the part where it's like, it does impact because I'm not, I'm not connected with the giving and receiving for myself. Yeah, I'm almost seeing like a tide, like an ebb and flow of love coming in and coming out and coming in and coming out. When you are giving love to someone else, what, what shifts in the way that you're, you're being? Yeah, I feel fulfilled. Like I feel it. Okay, so before we go on, and I'm not going to go through the whole entire of this um, conversation because I think you're getting the sense of this. But I'm looking at this question, again, if we're thinking about this, there is trust. I'm inviting, what, what is the, what shifts in the way that you are being? Again, partnering to respond, respecting his talents and insights, presence I think is there because I'm responding to the whole person. I'm demonstrating curiosity, allowing space for silence. Um, I think there's also listening because I am customizing this question and I'm exploring the things that have shown up. It's inquiring about his perception. I'm summarizing what's being communicated. And then uh, around awareness, I think, you know, the sharing of this ebb and flow of tides is I'm asking about the client, but I'm sharing an observation without an attachment. And I think that's a pretty clear open-ended question using concise language, again, allowing the client to do most of the talking. And again, this is uh, exploring beyond themselves. Well, maybe not beyond themselves, but it's certainly around beyond the situation. So, um, and then he goes on to the next thing that he's gonna say. So I'm gonna stop now because what I wanna show you before we finish here is how then all the way along the side, and you can move this slider over so that you can see it a bit bigger over here, but you have the ability then for each of these questions where I ask the same question, it shows up with interesting, listening, interesting, awareness, interesting, trust interesting presence. So you can see that any of the competencies that I choose for any of the questions or statements that I made will show up over on this side. So that's pretty cool. And I like that. I can also start taking out everything. If I make them grayed out, I can all see all of my notes. If I grade that out, I can choose only the ones that are agreement setting. And so I can see all the questions so far that are around agreement setting. If I want to just look at the one that's around um, trust and safety, here's all the trust and safety questions. And I can see which of the markers I'm, I'm, I'm hitting as I ask that particular kind of question. So I, I really like 
these different um, ways that Ray Notes works. I think there's also something else which I think is epically important, which is when we see what the client actually said as well as hear it, when we see it, we, we can't unsee what they actually said. I had a mentor coaching session with somebody many years ago. And for me, this became really crucial. I did a transcript myself of what the coach had sent me in the um, audio recording. And I said, you know, in the first uh, minute and a half of the conversation, the client said X. And I was curious, what had you not, you know, be curious with them about X and they said I did they didn't say that I would have asked about it if they had said it and I was like well they did say it and you didn't ask about it and and the client got really my my mentor coaching client got really defensive and so I don't like to work without a transcript anymore because I think it just keeps everybody in a safe space like I'm not going to get in an argument with somebody like if you didn't hear it you didn't hear it but if we can both see it then we can highlight it and we can go what would allow you to hear that language or that energy shift or that enthusiasm or that excitement or whatever the thing is that you didn't hear so that you can hear it for the next time. That's the bigger thing. I'm going to stop sharing for a second really quickly also just so that I can share slightly differently. Let me share my entire screen because what I would like to do is also show you, whoops, and I'm going to close that. So if you come in here and let's say you've gone through this entire um, audio, unlike me, you've gone through the entire thing and you've cleaned it all up, which we can see I have not. So that's not the point here. But what we can do is we can, A, if we're doing mentor coaching, we can add a user. So in this case, because it's mine, I don't have anybody that I would be sharing it with, but let's say it's yours and you decided to do mentor coaching with me, you could put in my email address and allow me to edit. You don't need to let me share it, but you can allow me to edit it. So then I can go in and capture notes and things like that, as well as the markers that I'm noticing. And I can also ask you questions so that when we get into a mentor coaching session, we both were both pretty much on point. Um, and then you go save and it sends it off to whoever you have invited to edit. I'm going to go cancel. I don't like the link as much. I prefer to people send it to me in an email um, just because it seems to be easier. The other thing is you can download the transcript, which is the other thing that I love about this. So not only have you used Raynotes to learn specifically about the competencies that your questions are demonstrating, you can send it out in a Word file. You can include the pre-filled assessment form, show the check boxes and front of the chosen core competencies and export non-checked competencies so that you can learn from this. And when you go download, it will download it to your, wherever it is that you download. And then you can open it as a Word document. And what I like about this, I think is so cool, is that, um, It'll, it'll show all of these things. Now, I rarely click on things like familiar with the ICF core competencies or demonstrates a coaching mindset because the coaching mindset is going to be demonstrated by a multitude of different competencies. And so those competencies typically get um, checked as you're going through the questions. And you can um, take a look at that. I've written about that in other places. And the, con the ethics are gonna show up in that I stay in the role of coach throughout the conversation. I don't turn into an advice monster. I really stay within my sphere and I'm not stepping outside of my role. Um, and also I don't do anything unethical in the way that I'm speaking with somebody. So that's going to just be demonstrated. And so when you're doing your assessment for a credential with the ICF, the assessor is going to get a question. Coach demonstrated um, staying within ethical practice and we get to choose yes or no. 
coach embody the coaching mindset, yes or no. And so what the coach, the assessor is going to be doing is looking at the entirety of the conversation. So that's number one. So it's really kind of nice though. You can start to go through here. And if you see that something hasn't been checked and there's no indicators or you have one question and it does all of them, but there's only one of them and you don't have multiple questions, you're going to start to see that there may be places where you have a micro skill that you could be working on. So let's say that this micro skill right here of coach inquires about or um, explores the client's words, let's say that was not checked. That means that's a place for me to go back in my own coaching and start to really go, huh, I'm not exploring the client's words when they say something that is interesting. I may be making assumptions that I know what that means. So that means that's a micro skill that I can start to work on and develop in my own coaching. I don't need a coaching mentor to tell me that. I can see it in my own transcript. So, um, and so here's an example right here. Coach explores the client's, sorry, where did it go? Um, darn it. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, coach explores the client's energy shifts, nonverbal cues, or other behaviors. So far, I don't believe I've done that in this particular uh, demonstration. I may do it later. We haven't finished the transcript, so I'm not positive. But this would be something that would be really important for me to be paying attention to as a micro skill if I haven't done it by the end of the conversation. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to throw in some random, so what are you feeling energetically? But when you hear the client get really excited or their pace of their tone or their words gets fast or their tone shifts, and all of a sudden they're talking like this, and then they're talking like this, we can ask a question like, what just happened? I noticed that you were talking really quickly, and then all of a sudden it sort of fell off. What happened there? And that would be an example of exploring the client's energy shifts, nonverbal cues, or other behaviors. Um, and so um, these, this is a great way of starting to get a sense of micro skills. The other thing that I really like, and, and I'm going to show you this, is um, let's say now you've gone through all of it and you want to clean it up because you need to pull together this transcript for your ICF assess or your ICF um, credential assessment. You can just delete all of this. You can delete these notes. Um, you can delete all of this. I'm just deleting, deleting, deleting. I tend to um, put in here, this would be demo, Lisa, coaching client. Um, and I now have that. I probably would also make all of the, anyway, I'd probably make all of the uh, font the same because it's crazy when you don't. I've got these different things that are on the side. My notes sound super important. Why am I talking? Again, super important. I've also got possible topic, possible success measure, possible outcome. So I'm starting to kind of hone in on those things. But for the purpose of this, I can, I can delete the column. And then I can make this be broader so that this goes out farther. And then I can select all and I can choose no color. So now what I have to turn into ICF, and I may need to go and do a um, find. So let's see here, where's the find? Um, edit find, let's do an advanced find and replace. So I'm gonna do a space, um, sorry, space question mark, and I'm going to replace it with a question mark. And I'm going to go replace all. There were 11 replacements made. And so now when I go back here, all of my question marks are, and I can do the same with periods. I can, um, I can go through the whole entire thing that way. But this way now, I have a transcript that's ready to um, sub save as a, a PDF and or a Word document and submit with my recording to ICF when I go to 
apply for my next application for my next credential. So I hope this has been useful to you. I really do love Raynodes. I do have an affiliate link and I will be placing it below the video. It will give you an extra 20 minutes of um, Raynodes um, minutes. And I believe it will also give me 20 minutes of uh, Raynodes minutes, which I very much appreciate since I use Raynodes for my YouTube videos and for all sorts of different things when I'm working with people. So I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for watching and see you in another video.